Right on. Dude, Metal Summoners, thank you guys so much. We are putting a killer bow on an amazing day, and we appreciate all the times that you guys have tuned in, supporting the show for over three years. Angel and I are incredibly blessed and appreciative of you guys. And real quick, a thank you goes out to Chris and Tracy for having us back at Rockin' Pod to just have a great time, connect uh, with friends, make new connections, and just have an overall good time. And speaking of good friends, we're bringing in a friend of mine, but just an all-around good dude, Matt Deese hey. from All That Remains up, is, is closing out with us good today. To dude, great to see you, Matt. How you doing, brother? How's your weekend been? Loving I know it. you're a local, but how's it been? Loving it. it. I mean, this is the first Rockin' Pod at the fairgrounds, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. This is a great setup. There's a ton of vendors here, a ton of people. I just met Kevin Sullivan. That was cool. Yeah. Got a picture with him. Uh, yeah, I'm loving it. You having fun? I'm having a great time, man. It, that was a, and I, it was cool the way they uh, set it up because we got some cool little breaks between interviews. So yeah. we could either fill them with more interviews or take a second for like the bathroom or yeah. even to do some walking arounds because that was my yeah. only criticism of the last Rock and Bot. It wasn't yeah. really a criticism, just more of a suggestion thing. Like Angel will tell you, last Rock and Bot, we were book stacked. Right. Like we did not leave our table for like six hours. Right. We finished up at like five o'clock and by 5.30, like all the vendors were packing up. And I was just kind of like, Chris, I don't want to be a dick. This is your event, bro. But can you make them stay an hour after the, yeah. the scheduled interviews and stuff? Like I got a wallet of money that I'm planning to take back empty oh, yeah, that went all, home full. We're all fans. Come on. So like it, but it was all good. No, and Chris was like, no, totally. That's a killer suggestion. Yep. Absolutely good to know. Yep. And so when we got our schedule, it was like, cool, we've got this little break here got this little break here this almost an hour and it's like oh that rocks like yeah. we are definitely cool yeah. when it comes to that kind of stuff but um but first and foremost man again thank you so much and let's talk all that remains because you've got new music coming out we do that you seem really excited about yeah yeah it's it's uh all the stuff we've been working on all the preliminary demos and uh you know songwriting and stuff like that just really really encouraging i i can't wait for fans to hear it uh, it'll be the first with uh, Jason Richardson on guitar uh, after Ollie, uh, you know, had left us. So uh, really excited for everyone to hear it. Uh, I, I, I can't say enough, and I'm excited to step up my own playing and, like, really get a chance to show off. And, you know, it's it's nice this far into a career to be able to still be excited about something again, kind of yeah. like it's it's the first time. For sure. Yeah. And it is your second stint with All That yeah. Remains. I mean, how has it felt being back? Like, does it have that fraternity feel where it's kind of like, you know what, I'm just kind of happy to be back in the family? Yeah. Or was there any kind of just difference with the time that went behind? Well, I'm one. I, obviously, we we had the hiatus and everything where, well, you know, I'm in CKY and they went off, All That Remains went off to put together an amazing career. Like, many albums sold, uh, a lot of great work put out there. But... We're all from the same hometown in, in Western Massachusetts, so uh, I've always maintained a friendship with them. Uh, it, so when I came back, it, it was like it made sense, yeah. but just because we've always been friends. So there was no ill will or anything like that. We had made amends long before that, so it it, it does feel like being in a band with friends. Yeah, so, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm a Salem boy. That's actually where I'm yeah. from. So yeah. like, yeah, that's Western right. Massachusetts, man. Like, yeah. The, nothing, there's nothing like Massachusetts. The boring end of the state, but yeah, you guys have more fun out in Salem. We do, we yeah. do. But at the same time, I'm, I've always been a small town guy. Like yeah, yeah. I'm very, my yeah. claws are dug so deep into Salem. Like I, yeah. I, I need that place in my life. And yeah. yes, I love horror movies. Yes, I love the, that feeling of like that kind of you know yeah. creepy gothic culture. Of course, that Salem has gotten to do. Yeah. But the funny thing is, I was telling my friend about this. The thing that I've been very protective about when it came to Salem, because again, back in the '80s when I was there. It was different. There was no Hocus Pocus, right. and then there was, and then Hocus Pocus did its thing. But then, still, kind of was more of a cool film. Yeah. And then it kind of turned into the millennium when all of that was becoming a thing. And my only real fear when it came to Salem is I didn't want it to become a cartoon. I was afraid of it becoming a parody. Oh yeah. But the one thing I can give a lot of credit to is, and they they hold true, Salem has a very aggressive historical preservation society. Yeah. You cannot mess with them. Like, you can't just roll up wanting to build a house without going through the channel. Oh, yeah. You can't just buy this, knock this down. Right. Like, not only just from, like, the history of the witches, yeah. but just traditional cemeteries, all this other yeah. stuff. Like, you can't come in. It doesn't matter if you're 
you know, Gene Simmons or right. Mickey Six or anybody. Well, like, think, think of the money they're, they're leaving on the table. Yeah, they're and, bigger than you are. Yeah, yeah. No, which is incredible to see. You know, like in Nashville here, if something's been standing longer than 20 years, they knock it down because they know they can put up a, some condos and make millions of dollars. Right. So for Salem to still be standing since time eternal at this point. Yeah. It's so good to see. Absolutely, for sure. Yeah. And so um, and so, how has the, the writing uh, and the recording been so far for the new record? It's still in its early stages. Um, of course, you, you have Jason on the West Coast, you have me in Nashville, the rest of the guys up in Massachusetts. So um, there's, there's work happening behind the scenes on both coasts. And then we get together, we, we write. So uh, it's, still, it's still early on. Uh, but it's going well. I mean, everything I've heard, all the initial ideas, incredible. So I, I'm really excited for it. Right. And Jason, like you had said off, off camera, is he's just such an amazing player. Like, it's just kind of a, oh, my God. One of one of the greatest living guitar players. And, like, everyone everyone knows it, but I don't think everyone knows it yet. Like, right. Like, obviously, he has his fame. He has his signature guitars and everything like that. But uh, time will be very good to him. Yeah, yeah. He, he will go down as, as one of the greats. 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. Angel? Uh, you also, are you still playing with Thompson Square? So, I, not anymore. I Just a couple of months ago, uh, my schedule started getting a little too busy with the touring on all the main side. And uh, we kind of agreed, like, you know, I, I don't want to hold you guys up because Thompson Square has gigs all the time. They're always playing. Um, so I, I didn't want to keep having to find people to sub out for me. So unfortunately not. But that was a lot of fun for me as well, to be able to play other styles of music outside of the rock world. Yeah, like how was it going from playing rock to playing country? Incredible. And, and like it taught me to really be a different type of musician, like listen to the band around you, pull back, hold, hold off, wait for your moments. Um, Whereas, you know, like, and all the main song counts off. You, you just fucking fuck up. That song is starting and you are there. You're 280 beats per minute going fast. Country, you gotta breathe. You gotta relax. People are there to enjoy it. Have a good time. We're setting up the soundtrack for a story with a country song. So, yeah, taught me how to, like, not be such a fucking spaz. <laughs> and even with CKY, that's, they had a little bit more of a progressive yeah. style. So right. they're kind of that middle ground. You've got that country which is definitely tuned down like you said to yeah. breathe yeah. cky was a little bit more progressive where they were a little bit more upbeat yep. but not a, again not that 200 beats a minute like yeah. you know strap it in right right yeah there, there were dynamics to it for sure yeah. um and I, I i like having all those tools in my tool belt you know it's nice to be able to groove and breathe and do that but know that you have that extra gear to go in and like really play something fast play, play something intricate so you know i i don't know how to do anything else i'm a fucking moron like if you trust me to get like a regular job i, I won't know what to do so i know how to play bass i want to know my instrument inside now so that i can at least put together a career Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Right back to you, brother. What gear do you use when it comes to bass? What, uh, what, what gear? What gear? Yeah, uh, so I use Balagare basses. It's a, a custom-made uh, bass and guitar company out of Pennsylvania. They made a, a custom instrument for me, so I'm, I'm using them. Uh, dark glass pedals uh, is what I'm using. I'm using their Microtubes Infinity uh, preamps and uh, Fractal. We're, we're on uh, Fractal systems for all the remains, so... No amps on stage. Everything is direct. Uh, my signal is just a really clean path. Guitar, pedal, or not even a pedal. Guitar into a preamp and then to the PA. So, really easy signal path. Are you a five-string guy? I am still a five-string guy. Uh, I, for some reason, a four-string feels like a little baby instrument in my hand. So, gotcha. five strings are what I need. I, I have big hands for a guy who's five seven. And it's funny, I'm 5'10 with small hands. Four string is just what I need. Like, I right. love my basses and stuff like that. But yeah. it's like, I'm, 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 that's my comfort zone. Like, yeah. I, I need that. Don't get me wrong, I, I can, 
I, we had a conversation with a previous bass player guest yeah. where we were talking a lot about that drop D where he doesn't have to switch out basses yeah. or tune right. because that string is there for that. Right. Um, but me, I'm just like, I, I need my four. I can't set the clock on my microwave. So please don't make me do five strings. It's not worth getting tendonitis over. <laughs> right, sure. right, right back to you, bud. I'm just fascinated to listen to both your conversations about string bass and five strings. Yeah. Do you, you like to use a pick or do you like to use I use a pick now. Uh, with everything else, I use my fingers just because you can get a little more of a subdued tone with it. But with all the remains, it's really all about the attack, the uh, presence. So you only get that with a pick. Um, as much as I would like to use my fingers for all of it, it it's a necessity at this point. Your your hands will there'll, there'll be no more fingers. I, like I'm getting old, they're just can, worn down. Right. Yeah, it's, Stumps. It's like I need the I need the pick to save the fingertips. Exactly. <laughs> so growing up, what what influenced you to pick up an instrument? And was bass was the first instrument that you ever picked up? No. So I, I was a piano player at first. Uh, my parents got me into music lessons very young, very very young, and uh, I I thank them for that. I mean, I, I learned piano first, clarinet, like you know did did just traditional music studies like learning classical music and everything like that and then as soon as uh, puberty happened and I was like you know not a little kid anymore I wanted to play guitar because it was cool and, you know all the cool guys who played guitar were getting girls and I was like I don't want girls let's be cool so uh, yeah no I, I picked up guitar um, started taking lessons on that and then I, I wanted to become a shredder i wanted to become like a really fast guitar player but my hands were too big and there were already a ton of guitar players in my town so i switched over to bass um i mean what really got me into it i'm 39 so i came of age like right with grunge ending and metal starting so it was like in that perfect period of like corn and rage against the machine having such great bass at that time yeah. that it, it was like cool to be a bass player again you know like fieldy the way he sounded even with faith faith no more having oh, jim yeah. martin with that look boat but yeah. you you can't listen to their music without that same with primus that in yeah. your face yeah. bass yeah. billy gold was a bad motherfucker yeah uh, he, he was a big influence on like at least the the power i try to convey like i, I you know the way that bass tone is, that, that means you're playing the bass like really fucking hard. So I, I tried to play with that energy at first. And then, of course, growing up, I mean, like, I was a big Beatles fan. Like, my parents were big Beatles heads. And Paul McCartney is one of the greatest bass players to ever live. So it was it was easy to always have cool bass lines in, in, in my head. So I, I, I'm happy I switched over. Yeah. Yeah, no sweat, absolutely. So um, let's let's just have a little bit of fun. We were talking about it off the air. I'm a wrestling fan. My girlfriend's a wrestling fan. We met. Uh, you're a wrestling fan. Oh, yeah. We just met the Undertaker actually at Monster Mania Con in New Jersey did like a do week the ago. One dead man show or whatever. It was like just he was a. Uh, it was kind of like not like this, but he was yeah. he was just a guest, a hired guest, and you could either sign up to meet him at his table, get an autograph or a selfie, or do like the pro photo shot. Yeah. shoot. We wanted the pro photo because they they print it out on a printer. Like right no after shit. you take the picture, so you leave with like a physical product in your hand. It's super duper cool. Awesome. And he was really, really nice. But yeah. my girlfriend, um, that was her father's favorite wrestler, and they yeah. really bonded over that. And he's not with us anymore. So like, that was actually really important to her to get to meet this person that yeah. meant so much to her and her right. family and stuff right. like that. But um, That's great. but yeah, you, there's some some wrestlers here. Yeah. The, the Taskmaster, Kevin Sullivan's yep. here. But what got you into wrestling, and who who do you like? So uh, I I've been a wrestling fan ever ever since I was a child. Um, so I guess the way I could talk about it is what got me out of wrestling. So I I just maybe three years ago got back into wrestling uh I, my favorite wrestler growing up and still of all time is owen hart and as soon as over the edge 99 happened i oh, was so upset with was how that was rap. handled and that i stopped watching i you know i was like it i know kayfabe is what it is but yep. like how am i supposed to hey, okay, sorry. good to see you Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Yes. Matt. 
Hey. Matt. Yes. Joy. Yes. yes. How do we know each other? I, I, I used to play with uh, your son. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. How are you? Good. 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 I won't interrupt. So no, no. It's always. So okay. We're doing totally. an interview, but you, are you and Huey here? Or? Huey's here. I don't know where he went. I'm just trying to scrounge up candy. Oh, okay. And free shit. Okay. Can I help Perfect. You? Yeah. Free shit. There you go. No, no. Great. Perfect. Yeah. They're doing an interview right now. I'll come find you in a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, you're you're good. No, you're good. You're good. We're low maintenance. Yeah, extremely low maintenance. Oh, no. You can no, come no, no, back. No. <laughs> oh, totally. No, it's all. We love it. Yeah. No, for sure. Uh, but um, the yeah. loss of Owen Hart. Yeah. Loss of Owen Hart is what did it. I was like, this was handled so poorly. And uh, how, how did they... The fact they didn't just cut the pay per view is what did it. Oh. And so you were watching so it. I was watching it, and I was like, "This is this is really fucked up." Like, I didn't know if you meant like the way it was handled after that, which was still well, poorly. Course, yeah. but I, I still sort of remember the, the day after they yeah. still decided. I guess they were doing like a tribute. The Rock came out, right? And, like, um, and it's like, how are you not allowing these people to like grieve? And how did you expect them to just work like after this? So. The whole thing turned me off to it. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck wrestling. Uh, and literally from 99 until three years ago, I didn't watch it. Oh, wow. And then uh, when I met uh, Tara, who turned into my wife, um, she was a big wrestling fan, but she came in later in life. She was a fan from the Ruthless Aggression era on. Right. And she was like... We're 80s babies. We're right. Because when we moved in together, she's like... What do you mean you gave up on wrestling? I'm like, I gave up on it. She was like, you've missed so many great things. And I'm like, well, I guess I did. And then when COVID happened, I had WWE Network and nothing but time. And we did everything. We, the same way you would binge like Breaking Bad or anything like that, right. we binged SmackDowns, Raws, and Pay-Per-Views from 2000 until current. And then I had to suffer through the fucking Thunderdome era. Uh, so it, it's like I, I did such a deep dive with it and I was like how did I ever fucking give up on wrestling in general and then having AEW come in right. as like an alternative I was like this is this is really the golden age of being a wrestling fan right now and in Nashville NWA does tapings here yeah. Impact does tapings here uh, I've become really good friends with uh, her name's Camille uh Oh, she's, she's married to uh, she's Jim. married to Graves, Tom, Corey. Tom Latimer. Oh, I'm thinking, of, think Car I'm thinking Carmella. of Carmella. So Camille, the NWA women's champion. Oh, the NWA, yes. Yeah, uh, the Brickhouse, Camille Brickhouse. Right. Uh, she's married to Tom Latimer, who used to be Graham in TNA, mm. and uh, uh, Kenneth Cameron in NXT. Oh, uh, very cool. We're, we're really good friends. They live here in Nashville. Nice. Uh, Jerry Lynn has an academy here. Uh fucking the Jarrett's are, are here you know like my best friend yeah. is Janet Romero no who shit. is Lizzie Borden from XPW oh, the cool. former co-owner of the company because her husband yeah. was Richard was Robert Black yeah 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 you know isn't that nuts yeah. so yeah we've we've really like gotten involved in it uh, we work with the music director of AEW now uh, wow. we've, we've helped do a couple of books for them like uh, just the other night <coughs> uh the Outcasts, Soraya, Ruby, oh. Soho, and Tony Swarm. Uh, their music director called us up on Tuesday and said, they're doing a new theme for Soraya's faction. We need a we need a female vocalist to sing on a song. And I'm like, I can do that for you. So I, I went through my phone, found the perfect singer for it, had her record the hook. It was on TBS the next night. And that's, the, that's her new theme. Jesus. So like, I'm, I'm really trying to insert myself into the wrestling scene as much okay. as possible. Awesome. Yeah. Well, since, you're, yeah. since your wife is from Hagerstown and, yeah. and, and, and you said you come down, yeah. you're probably familiar, but MCW is down there, Maryland Championship oh, yeah, Wrestling. Yeah, yeah. Their okay. arena's across the street from the house. No shit. Yeah. Okay. So, what, what town are you in? Oh, I live in Joppa. In Joppa, Joppa Maryland, in yeah. Harford County. Okay. And, um, yeah. and so, yeah, the MCW arena, the R.J. Meyer arena, yeah. um, is attached to a, a, a flea market, but it's a huge building, and yeah, it's yeah, right yeah. there in Harford County, right in Joppa. Oh, shit. I'll, I'll make to... sure you get all that info. Yeah, please. Please. Absolutely. Like, I, I 
outside of playing music, it's wrestling. No, totally. Yeah. Before yeah. I kick it back to Angel, but like, do you watch um, Dark Side of the Ring? I do. Yeah, because that, they they did. I got to give those guys credit. That Owen Hart episode was amazing. The fucking tear jerk. And it was so crazy though because the, the 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 wrestlers were talking about. They're like, yeah, we had to wrestle where we would be thrown into the corner where you could feel yeah. a broken wood dent yeah. in our in the ground in like the canvas of where cover. he hit. And yeah. it's like it's like we're being thrown into a corner where there's a pothole from where a body hit from. Right. 300 feet. Uh, uh, your body, I mean, oh, you know, like right. everyone's friend. Yeah. Fucking so crazy to me. Hey. Yeah, totally. So, my girlfriend. Hey. Recently got to meet The Undertaker. That's right. Hey. So. Yeah, I talk wrestling all day, but I'm sorry. No, no, it's all good. Let me steer it back to Angel because I, I know we're going to I know we're gonna cut into your, your, last, your last one of the day. I think you may have already... No, that's long meaning. Yeah. No, absolutely. We appreciate it, guys. Um, Matt and I will be in contact. We yes. will get him on the show yeah. where we'll have three hours to, <laughs> or whatever yeah. we want. Well, My apologies to the podcast after uh, after us. Um, we are going to let him go right now. Rock and Pod, we love you. Thank you guys so much. Matt, we appreciate you, brother. Have Thank a great so time. Much. Let me get so you over there, you. and I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Absolutely. Rock and Pod, we're signing off for the for the event. Thank you to Chris. Thank you to Tracy. It is rock and roll. Who knows? We might appear back up on you. But as of right now, it is a wrap on the Metal Summit. For myself, for Angel, we appreciate you guys. As always, you've been watching the Metal Summit.